Maplin. You had the Maplin 101, then the Radio Shack 201 later, and I had pilfered the parts from the prior one. Yeah, I I, I pilfered the my my 201. I'm sure I've shown it in one of my videos, maybe when I was playing with Sagan. Um, oh, I saw it pop up on eBay. I couldn't resist. Couldn't resist. I haven't done a video on it yet. Look. Science Fair, 50 in 1. Wow. That was before the uh, Tandy branding so i yeah like i that was my first one like, it wasn't this exact one because because the branding's different i don't remember this branding and i'm pretty sure it had tandy branding at the time um yeah no this is definitely <laughs> this is way older than my one this is way older so, somebody's at a play with a transformer on the end of a earphone oh no the lamp fell out don't you hate it when your lamp falls out Something else fell out, but there it is. Yeah, this is definitely not. Oh, the, the control fell off. Oh no. Yeah, this is definitely not. This is definitely predates my one, but I had the 50 in one. I don't know what happened to my 50 in one kit. I no longer have it, but I still have my 200 in one. I don't know what happened to my 150 in one because I started out with the 50 in one. I went to the 150 in one, and then I went to the 200 in one. Um, but yeah, this this is like a 70s, like early 70s one. Maybe because I yeah I definitely it's very different very different to mine so you want to see the bottom there they are it's just cardboard with wires and uh, yeah yeah but I thought yeah I'll probably do like a little video on that so looking at some retro stuff but that's pretty groovy that's in original box I I, I couldn't resist it showed up on eBay I I think I had a search um, search term for it and. Uh, Manufactured in Japan. Manufactured in Japan. Wow. Don't, don't know if my one, my one didn't say manufactured in Japan. Science Fair D Division of Tandy Corp, Fort Worth, Texas. So, yeah, I don't know if that, so I got this from, a, I'm pretty sure I got it from an Australian seller. So I think that's like the American version, because everything here, from my memory, um, from like the mid-70s, which is where my memory sort of ends, uh, starts, um, was all, um, was all Tandy branded. I did work experience at Tandy when I was in year 10. When I was in year 10, I was 15, 15 years old, and I did work experience. No, I might have been 14 at the time because I turned 15 when I was in year 10. So I might have been 14 at the time, and I did work experience at the Tandy factory which wasn't too far from my home at the time. I, I used to cycle there all the time. I used to actually ride my bike there. And because um, the Tandy factory, it, it was um, it was where they did all their servicing and everything too, but it was their main headquarters. And, um, and, and they used to have a shop there as well. They used to have a shop front and, and they had a back room in the shop front that had all of the discarded products, all the... Uh, products that they evaluated but they decided not to sell and all sorts of weird and wonderful things it was really good i got a lot of weird shit from the uh tandy um yeah the main warehouse where main warehouse at mount druitt although it wasn't tandy it's intertan intertan australia was the parent company and that's anyway yeah that, that was cool i did work experience there in the repair department working on model threes tandy model threes model fours i was doing repairs and alignments on the disc drives on the floppy disc drives in model threes and model fours i think that i think model four was the latest at the time that they were repairing there i don't remember like because they obviously had some of the tandy color computers and stuff but i don't ever remember seeing any of the tandy color computers because they, they just didn't fail i guess i don't know um yeah your first job was at while at school was at Tricky Dickies in York Street. Oh, Silicon Alley. Wow, Jim. Sil I wonder if I uh, would have seen you there. I, I often took the train into the city. You know, that'd be a big day out for me. You know, as a teenager, I'd take the train into the city on my own and I'd, I'd go down Silicon Alley in York Street. I got my bought my first oscilloscope from David Reed's. Bruce, Bruce also remembers Dick Smith in York Street. Yeah, there was J-Car, um, Tandy, Dick Smith, and David Reeds. 
there was four shops and they were almost next door. Yeah, David Reed, there was four of them. They were almost next door to each other. And I can remember because they used to resell, I think it was David Reed's who used to sell Altronics kits. And my Altronics oscilloscope kit was sold in there. And I used to go in there all the time and I'd see people buying the kit. And then they go, the guy who designed it's over there, talk to him. <laughs> so I had chats to people who were buying my kit. <laughs> And David Reed sold Altronics kits. Yeah, and you used to have to go down the big stairway. The big stair it was underground. <laughs> it's great. Oh man, yep. Before it was in York Street, who remembers um, Sheridan? Who remembers Sheridan Electronics? Mike Sheridan. Who remembers Mike Sheridan? Am I the only one? They were at Redfern? I think they were at Redfern. And I've got a bonus question. You you win the internet. You you win part of the internet if you if you remember Sheridan Electronics in I think it was Redfern. Yes, Jim remembers Sheridan. Okay. Do you remember where they moved to after Redfern? And who ran it? You you win the internet if you can name <laughs> The person who ran Sheridan Electronics and where they moved to, they, they shut up shop in Redfern because a mate of mine bought all of his chips, <laughs> all of his stock. <laughs> He's probably still got them. <laughs> like all of his like 7.4 series chips and stuff. Come on. Am I the only one? Am I the only one who remembers where Sheridan Electronics moved to? And I was so excited because they moved closer to me out in the western suburbs. Come on. Nobody? Nobody? Bueller? Bueller? Jim? Jim's probably the only one that might know. No, it wasn't Wes. Oh, uh, oh are you talking about Wes Components? Or, uh, no, Wes. It was, um, I'll tell you the answer. It was that. No, it was his um, son. Uh, David, no, no, they didn't move to uh, Rudy Hill. They moved to Blacktown. They moved to Blacktown. It wasn't on Main Street. It was slightly off Main Street. I can't remember the extra exact street. But it moved to Blacktown. So for me, that was a bus ride or a train or a short, much shorter train ride. They moved to Blacktown and it was run by his son, David Sheridan. And I can remember having quite a few chats with David Sheridan. And when he moved to Blacktown, he went, oh, this is a huge mistake. Like, I can remember him saying that, you know, before when we were at Redfern, we were, you know, bringing in money hand over fist. Now I'm handing over money for, for, for rent by moving Sheridan Electronics out to Blacktown. And yeah, he's his son, David Sheridan. Wonder what he's doing these days. He'd probably be 10, 15 years older than me. David, his son, David Sheridan. So yes, now Jim remembers. Now Jim remembers. <laughs> yeah, they moved to Blacktown. Sheridan Electronics moved to, they didn't last long. They lasted maybe nine months. Um, I, I bought a, um, bought tons of stuff from there, but a, I bought, I can remember I bought a surplus computer. I bought an NEC APC4. <laughs> I'm sure I got that right. NEC APC4. They, the, they had this um, surplus computer. I think it was the APC4. It's even got its own Wikipedia page, the APC4. NEC APC3 were international versions from Japanese NC5200s. I bought an NEC APC4. I can't remember how much it was. But I remember I kept it for oh, maybe six months. And you see APC4. APC that was released in 1986 was an IBM AT clone. Okay, maybe I've got a three. Maybe I've got the three. Anyway, the NEC APC3. And then I sold it in the trading post for a couple hundred bucks profit. <laughs> yeah, I don't think uh, David Sheridan knew, knew what he had there. So, but I knew, I went, whoa, that's cheap. You know, we had this like surplus beat up NEC APC computer there. And I went, yeah, I'll take that. Hauled it home on the bus. <laughs> and then sold it. I sold it in the trading post. Back when you could buy computers in the trading post. Oh my goodness. Which is a newspaper for those who don't know. It's an old fashioned newspaper, which, had, which was just classified ads. Steve is an apprentice mechanic but he spends most of his time reading the trading post. He just loves yeah. buying and trading. Ergonomic chairs, four of them. What do you want? 180. He's dreaming. Everyone just waited, you know, this is before the internet. 
everyone yeah you would buy the trading post and that's how you bought stuff and stuff and, and you had to get it you had to go there early in the morning get the trading post you'd flick through so you find oscilloscopes you'd find computers and stuff like that and you'd have to phone up straight away otherwise it'd be gone in five minutes yeah yeah hold it for me i'll be right there you know <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm half an hour. I, I remember I tried to get a micro B once. Tried to get it. Oh, yeah, I have to go. Last story. I tried to get a micro B once out of the trading post. And I, I, had, I didn't have a car. I, so I had my old man drive me. It was like halfway across Sydney, you know, and he's going, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, he's just, I, I don't know. He, but he didn't know anything about my hobbies or my computers. Anyway, he drove me out there. And yeah, so I said, like, hold it for me. I'm like half an hour away or something. So we drove across Sydney and and we, uh, turned up to his door, knocked on the door. Oh, I'm here for the, I, I'm Dave. I'm here for the, um, <laughs> here for the micro B computer. Nah, just sold it. Bastard. <laughs> Oatly, yeah. Oatly Electronics used to sell a lot of surplus laser. Yep. I don't remember kit parts. Nope. That doesn't ring a bell. Great trip down memory lane. Yeah, I agree. No, no, Australia, no. Elsewhere, more popular in Australia, no. Electronics was not popular here. I was, I'm was. i always envious of the stories of the surplus places you guys had. Although, you know, we had Sheridan's and Oatly did um, sell some stuff as well and things like that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe we were a bit spoiled back in the heyday in the 70s and early. But by mid-80s, it was... You know, it it was it was starting to go by by 1990. Um, they did try with the Dick Smith Powerhouse. That was the idea of the Dick Smith Powerhouse, and they advertised in the magazines that you know, oh, come in here and we'll teach you how to solder. And they had soldering setups. And they had real extensive, you know. Um, but yeah, no, it it just no, it didn't last very long. Um, yeah, but it was all over by 1990, early 90s, something like that. You know, but no, we we still have J Car and Altronics as well. Is 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 Oatly still going? Don't know. Anyway, no, we do have Oatly. Um, no, no, do have J Car. You know, I just uh, stone throw from here is uh, my my uh, J Car store. So you know, you can still go to the component bins. You can still get seven four series ICs out of the cabinets from behind the counter and stuff. You know, yeah. Used to go to Maplin, South End. That was a bit of a drive to get there. You <laughs> lived in Kent. <laughs> They're talking history. We we used to have electronic stores too. Yeah, but yeah, you had to be... Look, I mean, the, the, the heyday was the, you know, the late 70s, early to mid 80s. Early to mid... You know, by, by the end of the 80s, it was sort of starting to die. And by 90s, I mean, you know, the world, you know, the web came around in 93, didn't it? 93, like, you know, and it was just like... It was just all over. Kids had more, you know, and and the and the personal computers came in. Then personal computers became big, and then everyone, any technical minded kid, got into personal computers instead of hobby electronics, which is really annoying, you know. But that's just the way it went. Xjet blames it all on microprocessors. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Although you couldn't get really affordable micro controllers, you couldn't really get affordable microcontrollers until mid early to mid 90s like before that like pick pick was the first like one well one of the first affordable ones um and then there was the basic stamp and stuff like that um but yeah like before that it would cost you like a thousand dollars or something for a microcontroller kit you know and you had to be a business to order one or something and it was yeah it was yeah yeah see the 80s was the peak of hobby electronics yep so i'm glad i was there to partake yeah the picks were the start the picks were the start of the cheap mcus yep definitely anyway thank you everyone for joining me for the brief hour i um, gotta go home watch movies with the family catch you next time